Back to Super Tuesday in the United States, where America is set for a Trump-Biden rematch this November after the former ambassador, Nikki Haley, dropped out of the Republican primaries. For more on what this means for the US, Professor of Political Science at the University of California, Louis Despio, joins me. Professor, thanks for your time. What's your read on this? It didn't really surprise anyone, I think, that, that Biden is now unopposed. Haley stayed as long as she could, but really Super Tuesday put an, an end to all of that. I think it will help the American people and the candidates focus on the general election. Uh, the both have been uh, gearing up for that and have been ready for the competition for a while. Uh, but the sort of nature of the primaries kept them busy. Uh, that's no longer the case. Uh, the fall election began last night. There is, it seems, a structural issue for both the presumptive candidates, that being Trump and, and Biden, uh, Joe Biden has a, a percentage in these primaries where people were writing uncommitted, even though he really didn't have any credible alternative against him. So some doubts within the Democratic uh, Party about him. And then you've got the Republicans, the never Trumpers. So both have this sort of structural block that they've got to try and navigate. Absolutely. It's a very unusual race in that both frontrunners got the nominations very early, but there's a, a segment in each of their parties that are dissatisfied with them as candidates and sort of can't believe that there will be another uh, Trump versus Biden race. Um, I think that's why a relatively early campaign like this will help in a sense in that the American people will realize they're, at least for the time being, not going to have any other choices and will allow each candidate to try to overcome those challenges. Uh, former President Trump has to reach out to suburbanites, particularly suburban women who have been uh, uh, unwilling to support him in his either of his re-election effort or his re-election effort or this campaign. Um, and President Biden has to face uh, challenges within the Democratic Party, uh, some who feel he's too old and, and not capable of governing for another four years, and others who are dissatisfied with his uh, policies in, in Gaza. Uh, so each faces a challenge, and there will be several months where they can sort that out. So Trump locked in, it seems, barring any catastrophic uh, legal outcome or whatever else, who knows what happens with Donald Trump. But with the Democratic Party, the convention come July, is there any talk of a Hail Mary to a younger, more vibrant and vital candidate? Uh, no, there is not. Um, first of all, the delegates, the people that go to those conventions, are pretty loyal to the party. So they're not likely to... Uh, initiate any efforts against President Biden, unless, of course, there's there's a health issue that, that manifests itself between now and then. Um, I think another problem would be if somebody were selected, uh, that would alienate a lot of people. I, I think there are a lot of, you know, young, young in terms of politics, Democrats, people in their 40s and 50s who would be very viable candidates, but they'd need to show their strengths on the campaign trail and just randomly picking one of them, even if it's Vice President Harris, um, out of the blue uh, would... Uh, anger many Democrats um, and probably not uh, generate a lot of support for that new candidate. So Democrats are pretty much stuck with President Biden. Uh, and luckily, um, he has 50 years of experience. So perhaps he he has some tricks up his sleeve. We will see. Professor of Political Science at the University of California, Louis Despio, thank you. Appreciate it.